All right, so this is Griffiths Electrodynamics, problem 3.29. <coughs> We're going to be looking at this uh, distribution of point charges. Uh, they're, I don't know if you can see from this drawing or not, they're each a distance A from the origin. So <coughs> up along the positive z-axis, we have a charge of, well, a point charge with uh, magnitude 3q, and then a distance A uh, negative on the z-axis, we have a charge Q. And then uh, plus and minus uh, distance A along the y-axis, we have uh, two point charges, each of magnitude uh, or uh, charge minus 2Q. So uh, what we're going to do is, is find, uh, what is it, an, an approximate, um, find a single approximate formula for the potential valid at points far from the origin. And uh, just as a, as a nice hint, this problem is part of the section which is called the monopole and dipole terms. So hint, hint, what we're supposed to do is find the monopole and dipole terms of, of the potential, and that will be a simple expression uh, approximation for the uh, potential valid for points far from the origin. So let's start with the monopole term. All right, uh, monopole. This is, uh, you can find this in equation 3.97. Let me write it this way, the same way Griffiths writes it. Um, the potential monopole uh, term. We have our four pi epsilon naught. And then we have a big Q over R. R, of course, is the distance from the origin. Big Q is the total charge. So let's go ahead and find the total charge. It's easy, right? We've already summed it up. It comes out to zero. We have three Q plus uh, Q down here. And then we have a minus two Q and a minus two Q. Okay. So 3 plus 1 is 4, minus 2, minus 2 is equal to 0. So our monopole term for our potential is equal to 0. That tells us that unless the dipole term vanishes, uh, which it's not likely to, being in the monopole and dipole uh, potential section of the book, unless our dipole term vanishes, uh, then that will be the dominant term in our multipole expansion of the potential. So let's go ahead and figure out what that is. Um, the, uh, the definition of the dipole moment is uh, we're integrating over the, uh, the position vector for the source point, right? The charge density as a function of that source point, and then we're integrating over the volume, right? Tau is, is the volume element in Griffith's book. So there's actually a simpler version of this for discrete uh, point charges, which we're going to, to use. <coughs> so this will simplify down to just a sum of, of four charges. And this is found in equation 3.100. So let me write that out for you. We have the dipole moment, and then it is just a sum rather than an integral, since we're dealing with discrete charges now. Uh, and it's just qi, and then this vector r prime i. So let's find this for, for this uh, given charge distribution up here. All right, <clears throat> let's start with uh, this one. So QI, um, in this case, is 3Q. And now we need to multiply it by uh, this R prime vector for this first charge. Let me go ahead and number them. So 1, uh, 2, 3, and 4. OK. This, this is the value of i as we go through this sum. 
So the first one. So again, we're looking for this r prime uh, one, our first one, and that just has the magnitude of a since we're at a distance a from the origin, and the direction uh, z hat. Now let's move on to point number two. Our q two q sub two is minus two q here. Our magnitude of this r two prime vector is a again, and this time we're in the positive y hat direction. Uh, yeah, direction wise, yes. All right. Now on to number three. Uh, we have a. Let me put a plus sign here since we're we're writing out the terms of this sum. We have a a, a charge of just one q now. And now, again, our magnitude is a, but this time we are in the uh, negative z hat direction. So we multiply by a negative z hat here. And finally, we have point number four, whose magnitude is minus two q, uh, charge magnitude. The displacement magnitude is a again. And then uh, the direction now uh, for our r sub 4 prime vector, displacement vector, is now in the negative y direction. So we put a negative y hat right here. All right, so adding these up, we will just take the uh, z terms. All right, we <coughs> this minus sign will come out, and we'll have a 3 minus 1. Uh, so that's a 2 multiplied by q a and these are this is the again the z hat uh, component of our total dipole moment and and just like Griffith says you know we could find the the total dipole moment for in just the y direction and the z direction and add them together um, we get the same thing uh, looking at our our y hat direction, right? This uh, minus sign can come out here. We have a minus and a plus, and these two terms just cancel each other out. So our dipole moment for our charges is this. Again, what we're looking for at the end is uh, basically the uh, dipole uh, term in our multipole expansion. That will be the dominant term, right? Uh, let's write out that formula. So here we had the monopole term. Now let's write out the dipole term. This is found in equation 3.99. Okay, we have, a, of course, our 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And we have our dipole moment dotted into our r hat vector. And this is divided by r squared. Again, r is the distance um, from the origin out to our point. So now we know what this dipole moment is. We just found it. It's right here. Let's go ahead and plug this in right here. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Uh, we have a 2qa. And then we have our r squared on the bottom here. And then we're going to have a z hat dotted into r hat. And uh, furthermore, uh, Griffiths wanted us to write this in spherical coordinates. So <coughs> let's see if we can write this uh, z dot r hat into in uh, spherical coordinates. All right. If, if here's the point that we're looking at, um, then our, if I draw this, sorry, I'm drawing a, a vector as a dotted line, that would be our r vector, okay? Now let me draw a short one as a solid line. These are, these are probably really small, but I hope it's fairly readable. Anyway, this is our r hat vector. Um, if we're taking the the dot product of r hat with 
with z hat, uh, then that will just be, right, it's the uh, magnitude of our two vectors multiplied together, and then multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them, just the definition of dot product. All right, because these are both unit vectors, the product of the magnitudes of these two vectors is just one. And so all that we're left with is the cosine of the angle between them. All right, this, let me, let me draw it way out here so it's nice and big. That angle is theta. And so, again, because the magnitude of these two vectors is one, or unity, we only end up with a cosine of theta. And theta, because this is the z-axis, happens to be the same theta in our spherical coordinate system. So to write this in spherical coordinates, as Griffiths wanted us to, <laughs> we've got our 4 pi epsilon naught, of course, 2qa over r squared, and then this just turned into a cosine of theta. So this is <coughs> an approximate equation for the potential uh, for points far away from the origin. All right? If we wanted to get all crazy about it, we could try calculating the, uh, the quadrupole moment but we, we just wanted the, uh, the first, the first uh, term. So, so here we go.